Welcome to this Connect with Remedy recorded webinar. Today we will be discussing empowering the future of service with cognitive service management. Our presenters today are Lorna Russell, Darren Gosen, and Pradeep Kumar. The items that they will review will be cognitive strategy, a chatbot overview and demo, as well as a discussion of smart recorder, auto classification of incidents, cognitive email analysis. At this time, I will turn it over to Lorna. All right, thanks, Greg. Uh, the theme of automation is nothing new to most organizations. Uh, most organizations understand that uh, taking manual processes, especially redundant manual processes, out of the hands of people and uh, replacing it with scripts or other automation tools has been a longstanding uh, goal of organizations. But with the advent of artificial intelligent technologies, organizations have greater opportunity than ever before in history to have more ways to automate the way that they deliver services. And BMC sees that this is going to have a great impact in IT service management. And many of the things that are manual processes for your level zero, one, and two staff will be replaced by technologies such as chatbots. So as BMC, we feel we have a responsibility to help our customers mature their organizations. And this slide represents our point of view. And we've been crystallizing this as we see the market change and we talk more with customers. This is our definition of where we see the marketing go, the market going. So the first uh, part, is uh, service management excellence. And, you know, this has been around for more than 20 years and started with the outset of the definition of ITIL by the IT government's IT unit. It's the desire to find best practices for managing services and compute and those business processes that, uh, for, that are best practices for managing those life cycles, which became IT service management. So Remedy evolved along with that to become recognized as the leader in best practice realized through software. And one of the big trends in the 90s was the recognition that software could drive huge, huge amounts of productivity. The next uh, section or period we call uh, digital service management. And I'd say within the last five to seven years ago, this buzzword of digital has emerged and we see it everywhere. Um, we even renamed some of our internal business units to uh, include that term. It simply meant the acceleration and adoption of these software-based technologies to better enable organizations. For us within the DSM unit, we see three distinct trends of categories of tech that are being deployed to support this. The first one is cloud, cloud being remote compute de being delivered. The interesting thing is that while a lot of people refer to it as the cloud, in fact, it's not this monolithic cloud, but a fragmentation of a number of different clouds or multi-cloud. Our business units delivered a, a number of solutions like multi-cloud discovery and multi-cloud service management uh, through uh, so that we have a track record of helping organizations manage these clouds. The next trend is the ability to manage non-traditional IT devices going beyond PCs and servers and even mobile phones to much more interesting things like smart technologies. And then last of all, coming out of the consumer realm, you and your personal lives have become used to being engaged with an organization you interact with through the channel of your choice, like Twitter or Facebook. And we see that trend coming to the enterprise with the desire to engage through any channel of your choice. So the next great inning is cognitive service management. And this is a major transformation or disruption that we see um, if, is um, see the potential that's introduced by artificial intelligence and machine learning. Our point of view is that we do not want to become AI library builders. Rather, we want to explore what is the interesting intersection between service management and AI to enable people to be better at what they do, which is provide exceptionally good service levels for the compute they manage. Now, this perspective isn't linear. You don't have to be good at service management and then digital and then cognitive. 
we see lots of people who are at different stages within each of these. Cognitive also plays a key role in our company's BMC Helix strategy, and Helix is the containerization of our best-in-class solutions to deliver them as a service and on the cloud of your choice. Um, and the three key uh, pieces of uh, that will make Helix successful is the fact that it is on the cloud, and we use containers to help customers uh, by offering them their choice of location, cloud location, and even vendor, if that's appropriate. And then the last piece is we want to be able to embed our AI technologies throughout that stack. So our cognitive strategy is to combine our best-in-class ITSM and uh, assets with best-in-class uh, AI providers. And the first provider we went out the door with was IBM Watson. And more recently, we're looking at other vendors and plan to add them in the future. But there's three key themes that we want to address with Cognitive. The first is we want to help your organization uh, assist your end users in a more favorable and automated way so that you can focus on other value-add services. For personas like the agent, we want to make their jobs easier by automating mundane tasks and making their lives better as well. We want to be able to reduce the time to value, so we have a big focus on how AI is trained. There's a lot of excitement about artificial intelligence and what it can automate for you, but what a lot of people don't recognize is you have to train the artificial intelligence about your business, about your services, about your processes. Truly, you have to treat AI like a new employee once you implement it and train that employee to deliver the kind of service you expect from your human employees. Finally, we want to focus on delivering AI value across your data whether your data is in one store, in multiple stores, we want to give you more insight into your organizational data. And by pursuing these themes, we think that we're going to be able to help you run more efficiently, more cost-effectively, increase the speed with which you deliver your services, and increase customer satisfaction. Now I'll hand it over to Darren Gosen to talk about BMC Helix Chatbot. Thanks, Lorna. So what I'm going to do now is talk a little bit about the BMC Helix Chatbot as well as do a demonstration of the product. Now, the Helix Chatbot really enables an omni-channel experience for employees and end users by accessing conversational artificial intelligence. And it allows users to resolve their issues using their own natural language in a conversational interface. For organizations, it serves to automate much of the level zero and level one interactions that a support desk typically engages in, and it provides service that's very accurate, timely, and cheaper than more manual human processes within the IT organization. So today, as I mentioned, I'm going to give a demonstration of the chatbot in action. I'm going to cover a uh, wide range of chatbot capabilities in some of our different channels, and I'm going to span use cases that go beyond IT and go into HR as well. So what I'll do is I'll start with Slack, and Slack is a channel in which a lot of enterprises have started to use in which their employees are engaging with chat conversations with uh, people throughout the organization. And what this does is allows us to bring our chatbot into the channels that people are already using. So I'll go in, I've logged in here as Slack, I'll go to the Helix Slack bot. And what I'll do is I'll just start by typing my question or comment that I have for the chatbot in my natural language. In this case, I need to install some new software. So 
So I just tell the chatbot that. Now what the chatbot does is it takes this and it runs it through its natural language processor and tries to determine what the intention of the user is or what the user needs. And it tells the user that it can help getting the software and it just needs to collect some information. So can I provide the reason? I'm going to say that I need a better text editor because I'm actually going to do an end-to-end -end use case here where I ask the chatbot for something and through the automation in the service catalog, I actually get the, the software deployed. So it's gonna ask me what software I want. I'll say uh, Notepad++ because it's a piece of software that can be de deployed fairly quickly. It will ask me what the urgency is. I can select the buttons. I can also still type. I'll say it's high. It's gonna ask me for the machine name. So I'll deploy this to a machine that I have set up in my demo environment called Exchange. And uh, when the chatbot asks me to confirm, to uh, request the, the install of software on Exchange, I'll say yes. And what this is doing now is actually collecting this information that the chatbots collected and submitting it through our integration into Digital Workplace Advanced as a request for the end user. So it tells me that it submitted a request, it provides a request ID, which if I click, I'll be able to see directly within my Digital Workplace view. I'll be able to see the status of that request. The request has been made as if I had gone to a portal and filled out a form. I see it all in a single spot. Now, as I mentioned, what this is doing is actually kicking off automation that's deploying the software. So if I go into this uh, machine called Exchange here, I have the programs open. I'm gonna refresh it, and you can see that I have 20 programs installed, and I don't have Notepad. It's gonna show up right around here. This usually takes a couple minutes, so what uh, I'll do is I'll come back, and I'll show you that the software's been installed. And it will just really show the end-to-end -end use case of using that conversational interface to actually getting my issue resolved without a human intervention in the middle. In the meantime, let me show you another channel that we have, and that's SMS. And I'm going to reflect my uh, phone here. So I'll reflect my phone here. And let me make it larger. And what I'm gonna do is show you how users can interact with the chatbot simply by sending a text message, which is great because users don't have to install another application on their machine or their device, and they can use a communication tool that they use most likely every day with other people in their lives to actually integrate uh, and, and work with the support desk as well. So let's see how that works. Text BMC Helix chatbot. I need Wi-Fi access for a guest. Here's your message. Ready to send it? Yes. Okay, it's sent. So this will send the text message, and I'm going to get a reply here from the chatbot. And it's going to ask me what the name of the guest is. Dave Smith. It's gonna ask me how many accounts, and I'll just use my natural language here, and I'll say just one. What day should the Wi-Fi start? I have a guest coming in today. Today. And they're, come, they're gonna be here through the end of the week, so I'll use a different date format and say, I'll type it in, I'll say Friday. Now, similar to the other case, the chatbot will ask for confirmation of guest Wi-Fi access from today until Friday. I can type yes or say yes, or I can use the numerated list as well. So I'll just put in one. And what this will do again is submit this request. It's creating a request. It's generating a Wi-Fi code for me, which will be sent to me, in which I can share with my guests as they come in. So you can see it's a really great way. It's something that you can actually do as you're walking to the front door to greet your guests to ensure that you have Wi-Fi access set up using just the capabilities that you, that you already have within your pocket. 
So what we'll do is I'll jump back here to the Exchange machine, and you can see the notification. Inst installation of Notepad++ has been successful. When I refresh here, we're going to see that we now have 21 programs installed and Notepad is installed. So just a really good way to see how we can leverage these conversational interface with our integration into our catalog, which integrates into, in this case, we leverage BMC Client Management Tool to actually deploy software on an, on an end user's device, all from starting from a chat without a human intervention. So let's go back and look at another channel through our web interface. So I'll go into uh, Digital Workplace and I'll click on the chat icon and this will bring up our chat bot but through our web interface, uh, which is a great way for organizations to deploy this chat within uh, their environment. And what I'll do is I'll just start by typing hi. And the chatbot here has been trained to respond to say, great from here, great to hear from you, I have a lot of information about you, etc. And it lists out some of the information that uh, the chatbot knows about the user. And this is important because it does a few things. One is it gives a very personal experience for users. The chatbot can reply with information about them and personalize their dialogue back. Secondly, is that uh, we can use this information that we know about the user for context around the type of information to provide to them. So a user in North America might get a different answer than a user in Europe, depending on uh, uh, different rules and regulations or if the answers are different um, based on region, et cetera. And then finally, we use this for entitlements. We make sure that the chatbot only provides information and access to services like you just saw that the users are entitled to. So the chatbot can respect the permissions that uh, you've set up within your service catalog. I want to show you a couple examples of how we use uh, natural language. So I'll tell the chatbot, I dropped my laptop, I need a new one. Now, the chatbot here is going to respond and say, and it can infer that your laptop's broken and it's no longer working, and it's going to submit a request, and it knows where I am, so it's going to provide me some information on how to get a, a loaner laptop in the meantime, uh, which is great. Now, I'll ask for a new laptop, but in a slightly different context. So I'll say my laptop was stolen, so I need a new one. Now here, the chatbot recognizes that the user needs a new one, so it gives them a way in which they can get a new laptop, but it also takes the context that it's stolen, and it, and it provides information specific to that. So it tells the user that this is potentially a security risk and that we need to c connect with the security folks to make sure that the IP, et cetera, of the laptop is protected. So you can see, though, even though I asked for a new laptop in two different ways, the context of the answers is, is, is different, and the chatbot can pick up on that context through the natural language of the user. It's just one example in which the chatbot can understand the context. Now, in this case, I may say, well, a stolen laptop is actually more uh, of an issue than I thought, so I want to make sure that I have it right. So I'll say I want to uh, talk to an agent, and I want to make sure that uh, I'm talking with a, a live agent to make sure that I have everything correct. Now, this is our capability to transfer from a chatbot to a live human, and what this does is it takes the full context of the conversation and passes it through an integration into our live chat tool so that an agent can actually get this. Now, uh, uh, I'm acting as an agent on the other screen, but the agent sees, can see the full view of the conversation with the user and it can respond. So the, the agent here can say, I can help, and the end user can respond back to resolve the issue. Now, the end user can go back within the same conversational window. They don't need to change windows, et cetera, to get help from a live person. When the agent closes out the session, the, chat, the user can continue on the conversation with the chatbot if they have additional uh, topics that they want to discuss with the chatbot or additional issues in which they might need resolved. So it's a really good way for the end user to make sure that they can get resolution for their issues, even if the chatbot isn't able to, to fully help with the issue.
Now, what happens if the chatbot doesn't understand an issue? So I'm going to ask the chatbot that something that it doesn't understand. I'll say for an HR case, I want to uh, give a spot bonus. Now here the chatbot responds. What it's done is it has gone out, it's searched for some knowledge within its uh, databases to see if it has any information that can provide the end user, and it hasn't been able to find anything sufficient enough. So it tells the end user that I can't find anything related to your issue, would you like me to create a request for you? Which is a, a good uh, uh, case for an end user to be able to create a request and have someone follow up. But ideally you want the chatbot to be able to answer that. And what we've done is tied the training of the chatbot to the work that you have done within your service catalog. So uh, our, our customers have developed a whole host of services to be able to handle issues like this. So if in a service catalog I go into my services and I can find the service that I provided through Digital Workplace for users to be able to request giving a spot bonus, I can actually use that service as the data to train the chatbot and to know how to handle these uh, types of scenarios. So I'll find that service. And I have this capability to enable in chatbot. And what that does is it takes all of the questions and the expected answers from that service and it uses it as training data to train the chatbot and build a conversation in the chatbot. So you can see it's asked for the full name of the service, the user, uh, what type of awards, if it's a cash reward, uh, how much, et cetera. So what I'll do is I'll just go and we'll publish this. Now what this is doing is this is publishing the data in IBM Watson Assistant, which is powering the natural language uh, back end of our chatbot. And it's now kicked off a training uh, instance where it usually takes about a minute or so for it to take this new data that we provided from the service catalog and retrain the chatbot so that it will now understand how to interact with the user if the user asks about giving a spot bonus. So I'll go back into my chat window here and we'll see if, the, if there's been enough time. I say I want to give a spot bonus and notice here I'm not refreshing the chatbot uh, or anything, the training in the background is going to take care of it. You'll see that the the question or the response from the chatbot is totally different. It's asking for the full name of the nominated employee. Essentially the questions that are asked within the service if you went to fill out a service in a forum. So here I'll say it's a uh, Mary Man and it's saying what type of reward would you like to give Mary Man? So you can see that it can take the response and actually personalize the dialogue with the user. Here I'll say Bravo points and I'll say why does this employee deserve uh, a uh, bonus? So I'll say she's done a great job. Now one thing you've noticed, it didn't ask about the cash reward either. So if I go through here and I click yes, this is going to submit a request which will kick off the process for this, this Bravo points award being uh, presented to Mary. Now let's try it a different way but say that we're going to give a cash reward. So uh, I want to give a spot bonus, so I'll say again. Full name of the employee here, we'll say, uh, Mark Smith, and I'll say cash. So you'll see here is that the chatbot asks a different question. It asks for the cash reward amount. And what this is, is the chatbot has taken this service which has conditional questions and will ask different questions depending on the answers of previous questions and it's built a dialogue that understands that conditionality. So you can build very complex types of interactions with the chatbot by simply leveraging this uh, capability and what you have within your, your catalog. So here I'll say uh, great job again and submit it.
and you'll see the request done again. <clears throat> so that's a way in which we leverage the capabilities, the information that you have within your service catalog, et cetera, to very easily train the chatbot to be able to handle the more of the use cases that you already have services for. And that wraps up my demonstration of the chatbot. Uh, from here, I'll hand it over to Pradeep to go over his content. Thank you, Darren. I completely agree about the excitement and the value the chatbots are bringing to the domain of service management. It, it's just phenomenal to be able to use these tools uh, and help our customers, our stakeholders better, right? What I'm going to do, and, and as um, Lorna had previously indicated, um, we're going to now focus on the other areas where AI machine learning is making a difference and making lives better for our, our agents and our different ITSM personas. So I'm gonna walk you through many of those use cases, um, just going back to the agenda for a little bit. Um, I'm gonna cover smart recorder, then um, a little more about auto, auto classification of incidents, then uh, a very exciting capability, cognitive email analysis and response. Uh, and those are the three items that I'm gonna focus on. Uh, and we're gonna see a demo of each one of those as we go through the session. So the cognitive smart recorder um, is, a, is a, an enhancement to the smart recorder, which is industry leading and pending one of the, the most exciting innovation in service management that has come out from BMC. Um, as you know, within um, the smart recorder, um, you know, it, it's a free form interface where instead of a sort of bunch of fields, the user is recording as they are conversing with our service desk user is recording as they are conversing with the with the customer on the phone, right? And that's how they're recording. And, and the smart recorder is intelligent enough to provide resources in real time, right? So as uh, the service desk user is recording more and more description, the system is providing the related tickets. Um, system is automatically providing the resources that, uh, um, that help the agent so resolve the problem better, right? So, uh, so the knowledge articles that are matching that may resolve the problem for the customer, or um, resolutions that might might be relevant for for this ticket. So all sorts of exciting things. System getting intelligent. That's that's smart recorder that's been there, um, and uh, we're looking at this as as something that can do much better job using some of these machine learning capabilities. Um, so determining the intent and in, in providing those resources and then finding the right set of resources with the highest sort of matching uh, or, or history of record when that those resources were used in a similar situation, right? So bringing all of those to the user in real time. So one of one of these additions to this capability is about um, you know the system automatically categorizing these incoming incidents, right? So as the user, uh, a service desk user, is typing the description for the ticket um, in in the smart recorder, and uh, and at the point that they are done with the description, the system automatically making a call to the cognitive service, which basically then takes on to the machine learning engine and gets a categorization, right? So the opcat operational category or product category, both it gets them and uh, it basically um, um, populates it and it shows it on the UI itself that this has come in from the cognitive engine, right? From the, the cognitive service. So the user knows that this is a data, where, what's the source of the data and they can review it. Obviously they do not need to record it again or so they, it saves them time. And at the same time, 
uh, you know, if they have to change it, they can change it. Um, so, so this is this is a great enhancement, right? As we know that in this in our world of service management or managing a ticket lifecycle, the categorization plays an important role with respect to you know the assignment for the the support group, um, you know the many other things. The whole life cycle of the ticket may be determined from the categorization. So it helps them get it right for the first time. In fact. It does it for them, so it saves a lot of time and effort and makes uh, the whole process streamlined for our, our users. So a quick demo for this now. So the user here, the service desk user here is reporting or, or, or uh, re recording a ticket. And, um, um, you know, Mary, Mon, Mary Man here reports that a projector is not working in conference room A. We can see here as they they came to the point that the ticket needs to be saved. The system auto automatically determined the op cat and uh, product category provided the ca the categorization for itself. Now, once you save it, that gets saved. All of that thing. So then, in here, that the the beauty of cognitive and machine learning capability is that if there are different variation on this ticket description right so then the system or the cognitive service is intelligent enough to be able to get that and do proper categorization so in this other example if you see the slightly different uh, description and that the projector is not working uh, still it gets the right categorization in the third round here i'm going to show you another example where you know the the ticket as it it gets recorded it is saying that product projector does not come online in this case uh, you have um, system categorizing all that that incident in real time with the right categorization for for the ticket incident so that's uh, that's an example how smart recorder now is getting way more cognitive and it's leveraging the machine learning capability to be able to help our users the service desk users to be able to be a lot more efficient and um, and get right data automatically so then the next capability that i want to talk about is the cognitive driven auto categorization, right? So this is uh, a little variation of the capability we just saw, right? But as we understand this, our system is determining the intent, user's intent, right? The real intent, and then using the machine learning service to, um, to categorize or auto categorize for that intent, right? So, in this case, um, what happens is um, whether it's a smart recorder or a, or a new ticket creation through UI or through backend service, you have if you have if you you can enable the system to be able to auto categorize, right? So um, as a ticket comes in which does not have the category data populated, you can pick up uh, the system can pick up uh, mm, uh, pick up the description and use it uh, and feed it to the machine learning engine the machine learning engine based will determine the intent would sort of do its own magic and come up with the right sort of recommendation for those, those categorization so that is another way that any incoming ticket from any source you can enable this cognitive driven auto categorization now to further enhance that what we have done is that when a user is on on a ui we have added this recommendation button right which is with a brain icon that allow that let lets them know that this is cognitive service so they can choose to do it on demand any point in time right so for some of those scenarios where the updates on a ticket kind of results into um, a need for recategorization of the ticket you can just manually press the button and have the cognitive service get the right 
categorization data for you for op cat product cat or resolution cat um, and as as i covered before the categorization is kind of the core for the the how how the ticket gets assigned you know and so how to auto classify the incident or how sort of the support group or to who is the support person or so all of that is basically streamlined and helps you um, do that in much much more automated simpler easier way so we're going to see a quick demo of this capability next um, in this demo what we're trying to see here is that we have a ticket and the user is on the UI you have you know the user is able to click the recommendation button and it basically goes to the cognitive service in real time gets you the recommendation for product cat op cat you so so that's that's as simple as that right so you something you're editing an incident something changed you need to recategorize you can do that on the fly so let's say in this case if there is a bit of a change in the description of ticket right the ticket says hey um, I you know it cannot connect wireless it say cannot connect to Wi-Fi it's a little bit different right in that case also the recommendation button will get you know the right set of categorization based on determining the intent of the user and doing a much much better job um, of getting the right categorization for our ticket. So that's that shows you the power of cognitive, how it enables our users to be able to quickly get the right set of data automatic. Next up, we're gonna um, look into the next feature. So one of these new set of capabilities that are um, very well received in our, our customer base is um, this cognitive email analysis and response. So. Uh, depending upon who you are and your business practices, email has been a predominant medium of communication within most enterprises. If you look at last 20, 30 years, um, and uh, there is there are a whole lot of email-based integration scenarios that are out there. And many service desk, if you see, um, you know, a lot of ticket, a lot of volume of tickets come in through email, right? So you send an email to your service desk, it creates a ticket, right? And that's kind of one way, a channel where the information on the ticket is kind of minimum, right? Because users have the full freedom to send whatever little information that they want to send, creates a ticket on the other end in the service desk, it sort of um, requires someone to manually look at it, right? Based on that little information, uh, look at it, triage it, assign it to the right categorization or assign it to the right support group or enrich that ticket that, hey, the user is so and so and maybe in this location and talk about that context. So what we have done and we have we have talked to many corporations, large corpora corporations. What we found, 30 to 40 percent, 50 percent of the tickets are coming in through email. So the value of this feature is tremendous. Uh, as we go through these, you will see. So there are a bunch of capabilities in that area. The number one is that when an inbound email is coming to service desk, right? So we analyze the, tech, the the email using the cognitive capability and if there is no sort of um, template right there is um, not enough information to determine a template um, what we do is we call the cognitive service and um, find the user's intent and based on the intent we get the recommended template we apply the template before we create the ticket we do that for incident changes and work order so um, so what it what it does is it eliminates that manual triage of the ticket that's been created through email um, the second capability is about um, you know being able to automatically respond to the email with a knowledge article right for the, for self-help right so um, an email comes in cognitive um, service evaluates it and responds back to the user with a knowledge article the third one is to be able to respond back to the email with a 
DWP or digital workplace item, the catalog item in digital workplace that is our end user portal. So, you know, so th those three set of capabilities as, as you will see and the auto categorization put together makes a tremendous value or, or takes away a whole bunch of these or, um, email generated tickets. So let's, let's look into it a little more deeper. Um, so the, the first one that, um, you know, when the email is coming in, um, and um, so uh, we allow um, incident changes, work orders to be created using email, right? So in inbound email, um, this, the user can designate, um, you know, some codes or we can, you know, um, create an incident by default, we create an incident, all, all those sort, sort of scenarios. So for all of those incident change or work order, when in, there is an incoming email, we evaluate that email, that intent, we call the cognitive service, we get a recommendation for the template, and we get a high degree of confidence, then we use that template to create that incident change work order with the right template. So with, as you know, with the template identification, then all other aspect about the ticket, right? For example, routing to the right support group, workflow, next set of steps, uh, all of that is completely automated and it's streamlined and it is driven by the user's intent. By the way, when we do that, as you can see here, it, um, you know, we put a, a record on, on, on the work note saying that, hey, cognitive service management um, applied this template uh, while creating this ticket. So when a service desk person looks at that ticket in an UI, they know what information the ticket came in and then the template got applied and that's how the ticket is in. So from a value perspective, this capability has saved multiple FTEs, right? If you think about it, if you have 30 to 40% of your tickets coming in through email and uh, all of those tickets were requiring manual triage, now none of that manual triage would be needed because the template would, would be applied right away. You will be saving time. The users will be getting a response faster and you are not gonna need anyone to triage those tickets. So let's, let's see a demo of this capability what I'm going to do here is, in this case, is um, I'm, I'm in an external email portal where I'm sending an email, and uh, this email is going to result in creating a work order, and uh, then we will we'll drill down to that work order, and we'll see how that ticket was created and what template got applied. So as a user, I am creating an email um, composing an email to service desk. Um, I need a 24 inch monitor installed at my desk. Uh, I get this, uh, you know, email written up. I'm, I'm sending it over to the service desk. Um, I specify my location, anything like that. I send. As this email is sent, the ticket uh, gets created in the service desk. Uh, I got a work uh, response back with work order number. It says, hey, this is the work order number that's been created and you can view it in Smart ID. It has all other information that we saw um, that I sent. And now if I click on this um, drill down and just view the ticket in, in Smart ID, right? So um, the work order number, work order opens up, you see, um, you know, I have a bunch of information, the, but the most important part, right, that the template, right, the cognitive service management found the right template. So for this ticket where I need monitor installed, hardware installation is the template that was applied by cognitive service management. So that's kind of the beauty of this cognitive service because it's going to know the user's intent. It's going to find the right template. It's going to then start the right set of um, workflows, the support group assignment, everything else. Uh, so that's, um, that's the template part and this can be done for incoming change through email, incoming incident or incoming work order. Next up in this capability is um, 
being able to this uh, cognitive email analysis and response capabilities to be able to respond back to the user with with a knowledge article right so promoting self-service right as this incoming email comes in and we know that we have uh, a knowledge article which is matching the user's intent which can potentially resolve user's problem or the issue that they may be having and then um, what we can do is we can find the right knowledge article and send a link to that knowledge article immediately so that the user immediately gets a response if they want to resolve it they want to they have all that uh, information that they need basically you know it improves uh, the response time from service desk eliminates any manual triage on the part of the service desk and uh, it promotes self service right so so let's look at a quick demo of this capability so for this demo, what I'm going to do is um, through this email portal, I'm going to send an email to the service desk and um, I'm, I'm going to report a problem and we're going to get a response back and we'll see it'll have a link for the knowledge article. I'm trying to report an email. Um, I say uh, service desk. Um, you know, I'm sending an email to service desk. I'm, I'm unable to connect to Wi-Fi in office. Let's say that's the problem I'm having. I, I got my email um, composed. I send it immediately. I get a response back from the service desk that says, hey, this is a problem that we know about. We have a knowledge article for it. And here is the link to the knowledge article and you can fix it yourself, right? So that's the idea. And um, uh, we get all that information in this response email back. A user can click on this knowledge article link. It opens up the knowledge article in in the Helix ITSM. You can view all that information in the system and resolve your problem right away. So this is what exactly most likely the service desk might have done, but a couple of hours later, right, based on how much you know response time or delay that might be. This capability allows our customers to be able to take advantage of this machine learning capability, determining intent, matching intent, issue intent with, with a knowledge article, and then responding back to the user in real time. Think about that. Next up, um, another set of capability here is, um, again, for this incoming email theme is um, users do not re generally remember whether they need to serve, su submit a service request um, or you know there is a catalog item for a specific request they might have right so they if you have email as a channel they are very much used to it they are in their inbox they just type it out and they send it right so in this case what we do is we use cognitive service to determine the intent and once we get the intent we you know, find, look for it, right? If there is a matching catalog item, then we respond back to the user with that link to that catalog item so that um, the user does not really um, need to wait. They can quickly complete that service request or the set of information that's needed. And then, you know, the service desk is able to help them out. It makes the service desk operation much more smoother, faster, eliminates this manual triage of that incoming email that someone, some service desk agent would have looked at it, would have basically um, then gotten back to the user hours later saying, hey, I need this information or you have a catalog I, uh, item that you, sh you need to complain. Yeah, so it eliminates all of that. It reduces service desk work for responding to these auto-created tickets. So we're gonna, gonna see a quick demo of this capability. So in this case, what I'm going to do is um, create a new, again, through the email portal, I'm just trying to send a new email to the service desk. And, um, and uh, you know, this, then we will get a response back from the service desk immediately, automatic response, and we'll see what that is.
I'm creating a new email, composing a new email to service desk. So I need to replace my company provided mobile phone, right? And I'm, I'm, I'm just sending that email to the service desk. Um, as um, as I'm sending that, again, the, uh, the, the email processing engine is gonna, gonna evaluate this and see, hey, there is already a DWP or digital workplace catalog item for it. So they're gonna send it, uh, the response back with that link to that catalog item which has the set of information that we need from the user, the justification, all other information, right? So that link comes to the user, user can click on that link, right? And it takes them there to order a mobile phone, bill, that kind, that catalog, and they can complete the information here, right? This is the standard service um, catalog form. Um, you know, all the proper information is captured here and, and basically in real time, service desk, without requiring any manual intervention, has deflected that ticket, and user is able to get the answer and move forward with the right set of information. That is the value the cognitive capabilities are bringing to service desk. So we now, we now saw a bunch of capabilities um, with respect to um, you know, this cognitive email analysis and response, right? Now, how do those things work together, right? There are many of those capabilities we just saw, and we basically, how do you determine which ones to apply, and how do they, how do they all work together? Basically, right, there's a set of these capabilities that um, are applied on an incoming email. So, what is kind of the sequence of things that happen, right? So there is an email that is being, that's coming into service desk. Now, first thing we do is we evaluate for catalog evaluation, right? So we, um, incoming email, we look at the email subject and the description and we say, let's determine the intent, right? What is the user's intent? Let's get the cognitive service in. Now, first thing is, is there a catalog that supports that sort of matching intent? Then we know that this is, this is basically uh, something that we can sort of resolve the ticket right away, at least from a service desk point of view. So, um, so we do that catalog evaluation and we find a matching intent, then we auto reply as we saw in the demo with the catalog item, right? And then user can move on. Um, suppose we do not find a match, matching catalog, right, item. Then what we do is we then evaluate for a matching knowledge article, right? So, so we, we wanna evaluate the intent for a matching knowledge article. And in case Assume, let's say, if there is a knowledge article that we find, obviously with high degree of confidence, then we reply to the user with that knowledge article, right, as we saw in the demo. So, um, so then user can self-resolve the, the issue that they may be having. Now, suppose user, we don't find a good knowledge article right something that's gonna really solve that we can determine the system can determine the cognitive service can determine that hey oh I don't have a high degree of confidence that this article may solve the problem right so in that case we may not even send the knowledge article to the to the uh, user what we'll do is we do then hey we're gonna create a service desk ticket Let's see how we can enrich the ticket by finding the right template so that we can have all of those data elements that are needed or the, the categorization information that I need, the support group, everything else that's needed on the, the record, the ITSM record that I'm gonna create. So if we, we find a matching template, matching based on intent, we find a template, we apply that template and we create the ITSM record, right? And in that case, we might create an incident change or a work order. And in the fourth case or the final case, let's say we do not even find a matching, intent matching template. 
then in that case we call the categorization service right that hey now this um, incoming email I'm going to create um, uh, an ITSM record the email has bare minimum set of information but we can at least find a categorization based on the intent and sort of publish that so that the record can begin the life cycle with the right set of alignment without having requiring any sort of manual triage from the customer from the service desk so that's sort of the the, the way um, all of these cognitive email analysis and response capabilities come together i would say this that this is one of the most exciting set of capabilities for for many of our customers and they are they really really um, have been very excited to see this level of automation and intelligence built in the system and and being able to serve the customers in real time with with you know based on their intent right it's providing the right solution with all the power of the cognitive machine learning capabilities that are there thank you very much i'm going to hand it over to to greg now for the next set of um, presentation thank you pradeep and to cover our references from this session the cognitive service management page on bmc.com as well as the cognitive service management white paper can be found at these links and this will conclude our session want to thank everyone for joining